everyone. So we are going to start a discussion of psychological disorders by talking about anxiety. And so this is going to cover pages 507 to 512, and we're just going to talk about anxiety for this. So anxiety, it's that feeling of tension, apprehension, and worry that happens when we're engaging in some kind of a crisis or everyday conflict. And it's important to know that anxiety itself is not a bad thing. It can actually serve as our body's alarm system to let us know something's wrong. It can help prep us for that fight or flight. And it can also put you on mental alert and help you to be really focused on situations and vigilant so that you can protect yourself. The issue is when the anxiety becomes maladaptive and starts disrupting daily life. That's when we say the person has developed an anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorders actually have three key features. The anxiety is completely irrational. There is no reason for the person to have that much anxiety over this perceived threat, or maybe the threat doesn't even exist. The other thing is that it's uncontrollable. The person can't turn off that alarm reaction. Even if the person knows they have nothing to be worried about, they're still worrying about it. And of course, it's disruptive. It interferes with relationships and jobs and school and how they live their lives. So anxiety is actually really common in several different disorders. But in anxiety disorders, anxiety is the main symptom. There are other disorders that include anxiety as a primary symptom, and those would be things like post-traumatic stress disorder and obsessive compulsive disorder. And you'll be seeing presentations on those two soon. So how many people actually have anxiety disorder? Well, it's actually among the most common of all psychological disorders. They estimate that one in four people in the US will have an anxiety disorder at some point in their lifetime. And there's evidence that anxiety disorders have actually been found in virtually every culture that's been studied. But the whole thing is that symptoms vary. Anxiety disorders are also more common in women than in men. So when people have global, persistent, and chronic apprehension and anxiety, we call it generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD. The person just constantly feels tense or, tense or anxious. That anxiety does not go away. And if one source of worry is removed, another one quickly takes its place. So they might be worried about one thing, and then when, as soon as that gets resolved, they find something else to worry about. So they're constantly worrying. And the anxiety is attached to anything or nothing. So causes of this, it could be environmental. It could very well be that the person is in a problematic relationship, or maybe they had a stressful childhood, because stress at an early age can actually increase the likelihood of developing GAD. There's also psychological and genetic issues. You know, a brain that is wired for anxiety can actually give a person a head start toward anxiety. And another key thing to note, it can actually be evident from an early age. Some children with a shy temperament or those who feel overwhelmed in a new situation when separated from a parent, that could be an early sign this person may develop GAD later on. So panic attacks and panic disorder. The panic attacks, they're the sudden episodes. Anxiety rapidly escalates in intensity, and they start feeling things like maybe their heart is pounding. They breathe rapidly. They're having breathlessness. They might feel a choking sensation. They have feelings of terror, and they actually believe they're going to die or go crazy or completely lose control. And it usually peaks within 10 minutes of onset, and then it starts to subside. Now, it's not unusual for someone suffering from a panic attack to rush to an emergency room, convinced they're having a heart attack, a stroke, or a seizure. Panic attacks could be brought on by bereavement, maybe separation from a significant other, or interpersonal loss. In other cases, panic attacks come from nowhere. When panic attacks start occurring frequently and unexpectedly, we say they suffer from a panic disorder. And in this disorder, panic attacks are unpredictable. The frequency is highly variable, and the key thing to note is this is not related to things like a bereavement or a separation. These things just happen. The person develops a panic disorder. So people who suffer a fear of having a panic attack or embarrassing themselves in a public place, they develop what they call agoraphobia. Agoraphobics could feel falling, getting lost, becoming incontinent in public. They worry they might not be able to find help or to escape a situation. So they start to avoid crowds and stores and elevators and public transportation and traveling in a car. 
some agoraphobics never leave their home. They have such anxiety about leaving the home that they never do it. They don't want to lose control. They don't want to have issues. So they stay at home and never go anywhere. So when we talk about anxiety, we also have to talk about phobias. And so phobias are persistent and irrational fears of a specific object, situation, or activity. Now, the general public, general population, everyone has some mild irrational fears that don't significantly interfere with, with their ability to function. And that's the key thing. As long as the fear does not interfere with the daily function of that person, they will not be diagnosed with a psychological disorder. People who have phobias, it interrupts their daily life. So people with a specific phobia, they used to call it simple phobia, they're more than just terrified of a particular object or situation. They can actually develop panic attacks. It interferes with their ability to function in everyday life. They might realize that their fears are irrational or excessive, but they still go to great lengths to avoid these things. Now, only about 13% of the general population actually experiences a significant phobia at some point in their lives. More than twice as many women as men suffer from specific phobia. So if we look at the objects or situations that cause phobias, it usually falls into one of four categories. It could be a fear of a particular situation. It could be a fear of flying or driving, for example. It could be a fear of features of the natural environment. Maybe the person is afraid of heights. Maybe the person is afraid of thunderstorms or water. It could be a fear of injury or blood, including the fear of getting injections or having any medical procedures done. The person might also have a fear of animals or insects, you know, fear of snakes, fear of spiders, etc. So if you look at table 13.2 on page 510, it actually shows some of the unusual phobias. For example, there are people who are afraid of the number 13, and they are said to have triskaidekaphobia. So these are actual things that people are afraid of, and um, they have these fears and these actual serious anxiety regarding these things. So as we talk about anxiety, we also talk about social anxiety disorder. It's one of the most common psychological disorders and it's actually more prevalent in women than men. It is basically the irrational fear of being critically evaluated by others. So the fear is actually fed by an exaggerated tendency to look at the negative information that's happening in a social setting. Maybe you notice one person's unhappy instead of looking at everyone else smiling. And sometimes people will recognize that their fear is excessive or irrational, but that doesn't make it any easier. People who have social anxiety disorder may suffer a panic attack when they're in social situations. And when they fear being judged by others in social situations, it begins to interfere with their daily life. That's the point that someone would be, would be diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. So in explaining phobias, what causes all of these things to happen, including things like social anxiety disorder? Well, one of the main things is classical conditioning. So think of little Albert. Little Albert was conditioned to be afraid of certain things. So maybe someone's fear developed from some sort of a traumatic event. There's also operant conditioning that could be a part of it. And the operant res response involves the relief of something negative by doing something in particular. So for example, if someone avoids dogs, it gets negatively reinforced by the relief of that anxiety. So a person who's afraid of dogs and avoids the dogs feels better by avoiding the dogs. Therefore, they avoid dogs and it creates a phobia, that type of thing. There's also observational learning. So people can actually learn to be afraid of things, be phobic of things, by observing someone else who acts as a model in the situation. So there's a couple examples of this. There's a child who could observe a parent act in fear of something and then learn to be afraid of that same thing. Or maybe someone watched something on TV, like developed, you know, watched an airplane crash, a horrific airplane crash, and suddenly became afraid of flying. So by watching these things happen, the person develops a phobia and then becomes afraid of those things himself or herself. So in the next one, you can expect us to be talking about post-traumatic stress disorder.